Another example, cannabis hyperemesis syndrome. So, yes, you know, 10 years ago, we would see some cases, <laughs> but not, not very many. And now, uh, you and know, I must say, room. yeah, I must say uh, our emergency colleagues are very skilled, but we don't have great treatments for this. And so people come in and uh, they may get treated symptomatically, but also with things like Haldol or capsaicin. Um, but, you know, th this has become more challenging because of the potency. And I have patients uh, in my clinic that have had numerous ED visits related to this. And they, and these are smart people, and they will often try to rationalize their use. Well, I exercised a lot that day, and then I, I, I used, and I end up in the ER. So if I don't do that, it won't happen. Or if I stay away from these particular strains, it won't happen. And, you know, that's not, it's not so simple, unfortunately. And so if you are using strong cannabis in a chronic way, you're just opening the door to a host of problems that are, are very difficult to treat. And we've talked about a couple now, psychosis for sure. Uh, cannabis hyperemesis is also uh, one on that list. So, so again, it gets back to things are different now. You know, the, the right. potency is much, much stronger. And so we're, we're feeling the negative impacts of that increased potency.